get there and you feel at home. And yeah. I feel like when you come here, I don't feel homely vibes at all. Yeah. Even though I, I was born here, I was raised here, everything. The stress of being a teacher is wild. Yeah. And I think I just had the worst burnout ever. I didn't really feel like it was worth it anymore. Like I really enjoyed teaching and being around the students, but in terms of the workload, I was like, mm, this can't be it. But then I met um a guy there who was, he was a year older than me at the time. So I think he was like 23, 24. And he um had around three or four properties at the time. And I said, yeah, I need to talk to you. I know it's quite tight, but I gave myself like two months, a month and a half to renovate wow. the whole house. I was in there every day all day i was not outside i said no one is seeing if you want to see me come and help me with the house the property price was one hundred and twenty-five thousand. okay and that was for a two-bed house yeah. um in the staffordshire area okay. i work with um companies even such as like amazon things like that and i get their workers like into the house he started doing the work he had like a digger and he just dug up the whole garden. Like he just dug up everything, like everything possible that he saw, he just dug it up. The grass, he dug it up. For what reason? I don't know. He just dug it up. <laughs> and they threatened to like rip up the whole garden. Really? Um, Because, but that was when I asked them to fix the stuff and they said it was fine. And I said, well, I'm not paying you. So I said, they'll rip it up. And I said, well, you can rip it up because it would just be back to how it used to be. And you still haven't got one penny from me. So if you want to rip it up, that's absolutely fine with me because I'll just go to somebody else. Welcome to the takeoff experience where I sit down with highly driven people to talk about their journey, their failures and their successes. If you want to take off in your career, your business, your finances, or your mindset, then this podcast is for you. Welcome back to the takeoff experience. Uh, so we have a special guest straight from Jamaica. Uh, hi, how are you doing, Hedy? I'm really good. Still tired, but I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, I've um, had a very hectic two weeks in Jamaica. Why hectic? Wasn't it a holiday? Do you know what? I feel like it was just nonstop enjoyment. I feel like I was actually partying every single day wow to the point where i lost my voice i'm actually glad that he's come back for this episode yeah because <laughs> i probably like two days ago i was like <laughs> i was squeaking yeah i was barely talking but no i had such a good time mad mad yeah. whereabouts in uh, jamaica did you go to so i stayed in lucy um okay. so it's kind of in between montego bay and the grill it's mm -hmm. the middle of nowhere um, a hotel called Grand Palladium. So if wow. anyone wanted to stay there, I definitely recommend, but I don't recommend if you want to be close to things. Mm -hmm. If you want to be close to things, I'd probably recommend like Montego Bay yeah. or Ochi. Um, but it's a beautiful hotel and it's my second time there and it never disappoints. Wow, wow. So yeah. tell us a, a few of the things that you got up to. So you said partying. What type of party? Were there pool parties? Were they house parties, um, clubs? So because the hotel is so far, I feel like the entertainment team really make an effort to make sure you yeah. do not need to feel like you need to leave the hotel. So in the hotel, they had like all white parties, headphone parties, mm -hmm. um, they had pool parties as well. And then we went out a few times and a lot of like the clubs are like outdoor clubs. Okay. So they're like along the beach. Yeah. Um. So if you're hot, you're finished. <laughs> you have to <laughs> snow air. Really? Like, no, no, no breeze on that air. No Mad. breeze. <laughs> um, so we went out around about two or three times um, in Montego Bay. Um, and then some of them again, yeah, they were along the beach. So, and then we went to when ATV riding, that was really good. I did a safari. That wasn't so good. Cause I thought about it after and I said, what wildlife is actually in Jamaica other than goats? <laughs> There's actually nothing else other than goats. And no, really the safari was goats. <laughs> you know, all I really saw was like alligators. Um, I've never seen an alligator. A little cat. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. It is that it? Dead. Nah, so how could they say that's a safari? Goat no. and alligator. It was so dead. I don't know why I thought there'll be something different in Jamaica. Like, I know what's in Jamaica, so I yeah. don't know what I was expecting. But um, uh, there was horse riding was an option. I probably should have done yeah. horse riding instead. Um, what else did we do, honestly? I feel like we did everything. That's mad. Um, but yeah, there was like 15 of us. So okay. it was a big group. Was that friends, so, family? A oh. mixture. Okay. Yeah, a mixture. Cool, cool. Um, but we do it every single year. So every year okay. I link up with my family in Canada and yeah. then we just go on one big holiday. Wow, that is dope. Um, yeah, they used to live over here and they okay. moved. So just to keep in touch, we yeah. try and holiday with each other every single year. Okay. Um, COVID stopped that, but we're back up again. Now. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, is that where your family's from? Jamaica? Yeah, is yeah, it? yeah. yeah. Jamaica. My, were were you family. born there or? No, yeah. I wasn't born. I was born here. I was born okay. in Birmingham. Oh, you're born in Birmingham. Okay, yeah. born, bred, bred in, in Birmingham. Everything. Mad, mad. <laughs> yeah. And um, have you ever considered like, move into jamaica yeah 
Really? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I want to do six months and six months, yeah. I mean, it's Um, possible. Yeah, I'm looking to go back to Jamaica in December this year. Um, And then I really want to try and find land so that I can build a property. Yeah. Um, and just do some more investment so that it makes it a lot easier for me to do the 50-50 because whenever I come back here, I feel depressed. Like, I'm like, this isn't it. Look, yeah, we ain't got no sun. Um, oh. The economy is not doing well. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I mean, like, the economy in Jamaica isn't great either, but I just feel like the pace of living is just nicer. Everything yeah. is calm. You're around your own people. Um, the vibes are just good. Um, yeah, I just get there and you feel at home. And yeah. I feel like when you come here, I don't feel homely vibes at all yeah. even though I, I was born here i was raised here everything yeah yeah, yeah. i know yeah. you i know what you're saying I, I do get that vibe sometime i just feel like it might be a bit controversial to say this but i don't know if the uk is just is for black people no i've been thinking think it's it more and more and i think it's kind of coming across in my podcast yeah. i think mean, yeah obviously you know ck as well we we're talking yeah. about like moving abroad potentially yeah you're both nigerian aren't well. you? would you go back yeah. to nigeria at some point, yeah. Mm. Yeah, at some point I would. Like, I think I definitely, I, I see myself there, like, in the long term. Maybe not right now. I think maybe I want to live in a few other countries first, mm-hmm. potentially. Like what? Um, I don't know, you know. I, I consider a lot of places. I consider Dubai. I considered Hong Kong, Canada. Mm. Loads of places, right? Like, Hong Kong's interesting, though. I don't know now, but that was, I wrote this list, like, years ago, like, Probably like six years ago. Did you do finance in Hong Kong? <sighs> Potentially. Mm-hmm. It's. I mean, yeah. It's. It's. It's definitely. It's definitely a consideration mm. for me. But um, yeah, we'll have to see. We'll have to see what. what Canada's on my on. list. I've thought about Canada. I mean, you got family there, right? Yeah, so loads. It, it makes. It makes yeah. sense. That um, that for me is like home from home. Yeah. Um. You must go there often. I've right. been there three times now. And the last time I went was genuinely to see if I wanted to move there. Okay. Um, but I haven't done a winter yet. Yeah. Hmm. That's the problem. The cold. I'm not. The yeah. Winters. I don't know. I don't know if I'm a fan of, of the cold. Mm-mm. To be honest, black people, look, yeah. We're yeah. supposed to be in the sun getting that vitamin mm-hmm. D. Um, so who is Hayley? Oh, who is Hayley? That's a big question. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a big question. Um, I can kind of talk about like my background a little bit, like what I've been doing in mm-hmm. terms of, I went to uni, I did mm-hmm. psychology at uni. Okay. I definitely feel like psychology and understanding people and helping people is definitely my passion. Like that is, that's yeah. definitely like who I am. Yeah. Um. So when I was in uni, I did like a module of educational psychology. So we started learning about like people with special needs and I started going, I went into that straight after. So I was a special needs teacher for four years. Okay. Um. So I left that in Jan- no December last year. Um. Only really left because the stress of being a teacher is wild. Yeah. And I think I just had the worst burnout ever. I didn't really feel like it was worth it anymore. Like I really enjoyed teaching and being around the students, but in terms of the workload, I was like, mm, this can't be it. Wow. Like this actually can't be it. I mean, the only benefit for me at that point was just the holidays. That yeah. was literally it. Wow. Um, so it got to the point where I thought I needed to get out. So at the moment I work at a university, so I'm still in education, okay. um, but it's more office based and I'm definitely a very active person. So I don't really feel like that's for me. So I'm, I am going to go back into teaching, yeah. um, but maybe I just need to learn from what caused my burnout from before and then just try something new. Yeah. And also I think the establishment that I worked for before didn't really give a lot of support so maybe just right, trying somewhere right, else right, as right, well right right yeah and and your study you were studying right were you doing um, that alongside your teaching so psychology i didn't do any teaching okay. and then um when i was teaching they put me on a teacher's course like to actually okay. get my qualification yeah so i finished that in Ju- end of june early july um this year so as of now, like I'm a qualified teacher, I can okay. kind of teach. Um, it's mainly like adult education, so like GCSE upwards. So I was interested in teaching like A level psychology and things like okay. that. I wouldn't mind going into that, but again, I think I just need to really like just have a think. Yeah. Um, and then alongside that, um, because teaching is definitely my passion, having been my passion, I have been doing like workshops along the side of like teaching people how to get into property, how to invest in property. Yeah. And I really enjoy that. And I'd love yeah. to take that further. Again, time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's time. a lot of time. Yeah. I think for me, my biggest thing is prioritizing my time to yeah. make sure that I can do all the things that I want to do and I can give everything a hundred. Yeah. Um, 
And then, yeah, probably just another side to me is like the property side, the property yeah. investing side. Um, so I come from a very like property investing family. Okay. Um, my uncle, he invests in property over here and in Jamaica. Okay. Um, and then his daughters invest over here. Um, and then my parents, they invest over here as well. I think all of us are very interested in investing in Jamaica, maybe collectively and separately as well. Um, but yeah, so me and my mom and dad, we kind of like do the property together and also separate at the same time. Okay. So we have like a family portfolio and then we have our own individual portfolios too. Um, and that's pretty much what I'm building at the moment. It's going really well and I'm actually not shocked, but I'm just really like overwhelmed at how well it's actually going. Okay. I can see how people can really become financially free from property. And it's like, I've only... I've only been in it for like a year and that's not even me giving like a hundred either. So I feel like really, yeah. Okay. And I wow. feel like if this is me not even giving it a hundred, then imagine what me giving it a hundred actually looks like. Yeah, yeah. Um, so as of like maybe November onwards, I'm really going to go hard with the property stuff so I can phase out of, you know, working for other people. Cause yeah. It's not me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think, I feel like property, can if you do it well and it's generating some form of income it can help you do other things that you really really want to yeah. do yeah um so you said that your family are into property are they the ones that got you into property like how did you get into property yourself um i'd probably say they've always been there telling me you know save and my mom's like always on my back about make sure you have savings make sure you're doing this make sure if you have money you invest in it and just leave it sitting there so she's always been there telling me what to do um in around i think it was 20 maybe i think it was 2019 yeah i think it was 2019 um i started when well, my mum started going to these workshops called like black landlords uk okay um <clears throat> hosted by a guy called rod in birmingham and he i went to one of those and it was really good however i felt like it was for people that are more advanced so when I got there, my questions are more like, what the hell is a mortgage? And they're talking about these million dollar renovations. And I'm like, yeah, this isn't for me. <laughs> this isn't for me yet. Like I'm not there. But then I met um a guy there who was, he was a year older than me at the time. So I think he was like 23, 24. And he um had around three or four properties at the time. And I said, yeah, I need to talk to you. Like, <laughs> I need to talk to you, see what you're doing and how you did it. And even at the workshop, like he really sat me down and just was like, these are just the basic steps that you need to do right now. Like just check your credit score. Like, are you even eligible to even take out a large amount of credit? Um, what are your savings looking at? Have you got a house to buy ISA? All these sort of things. Um, so I feel like because he was similar age to me and more relatable, I feel like that gave me like a little bit more of a push. And he was very much became like my accountability partner in terms of like making it more realistic. And I think because he explained that like, his first property was a hundred thousand pounds and it wasn't far from where I lived. And I think he put a five percent deposit that was like five grand down. And I was like. I could save five grand. Like, what? what's five grand? And I was like, I could save that. And that was your deposit. Okay, he fixed it up. But I said, okay, I could save a little bit more than that. And it was getting more and more realistic. And then um, he was showing me some of the properties that he had. And I was like, no, I could do this. So I definitely feel like, yes, my parents were there to proper push me. But I feel like he very much gave me like an eye opener into how possible it was at such a young age because yeah. he bought his first one at 19. So I was like, if you've done at 19, I can, I can definitely do this. Yeah. I can definitely do this. And then, wow. um, just from kind of like how we like fed off each other, um, collectively we started doing like workshops, um, around about how to get into property and how to invest in property. So we did that together throughout 2019. Um, but they were solely just for young black, um, people, from 16 to 25 to 30. So it started off into 25 and then it went up to 30. Um, we did one in Birmingham and then we did one in London. Um, they went so well, like, so well. I really enjoyed that. And that was definitely like my passion. And then unfortunately after that COVID hit, so we kind of took a stop. Um, but that's more or less how I started my page. Okay. Um, we both started it together. Just instead of like doing the workshops, we tried to just put the information like on Instagram. So it was easier access for people. Yeah. Um, that went really, really well. And then um, he started doing more like investments. So we kind of just went separate in terms of the page. So I took over the page and I kind of made it my own page. 
Um, and then, yeah, like since then I've kind of been starting up my podcast because I thought the podcast would be more beneficial than just posts as well. And then I started doing workshops again. Okay. But the workshops were by myself because unfortunately that guy passed away. So yeah. I just did the workshops by myself. Yeah. Um, not sorry, not by myself. That's a lie. That's a whole lie. I was doing them with Clarence. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. CK, shout out CK. Yeah, you did <laughs> CK. And I think you did one no, with... No, because I couldn't do it without with, CK. So yeah, let me and not lie. as well, right? Yeah, one time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Shout so out CK, so man. Let me yeah. not lie like that. Wow. <laughs> no, it's not a lie. I know, Honestly, I know what you're I saying. I could not do it without Clarence. Because Clarence gives so much information about yeah. mortgages, credit scores, everything like I feel like the two of us make such a good duo with the yeah. workshops because I've got like the experience of like purchasing a property, investing in property, and then he's got like all the questions about like mortgages and how to get started. And Ola has like all the finance information on how to budget, how to save, all of this. So I feel like as a team, like it was great. And the yeah. workshops have been so good. I, I hope, hope you keep them going them. for sure. Like I yeah. think I think definitely make it a yearly thing, maybe even a like a biannual thing. Um, yeah, well. I want to do the in-person workshops maybe every couple of months, but the online workshops that me and me and Clarence do, they they come run every month if we yeah. need to. Like yeah. it's not a problem. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Shout out, I think the guy that you mentioned, his name was Jason, right? Yeah. yeah shout yeah. out to him Jason, as well. I yeah. know that um he definitely left a legacy behind a and he had a, a, a really big impact on you yeah, and what you're yeah, doing yeah. um i saw your shout out to him on um instagram as well yeah. and i think it's like people like that that really help elevate us mm. you know yeah because i think like financial education it's one of those things it's so it's so interesting because i think it's like a word of mouth thing mm -hmm. like if you've got if you know people you'll tell your people okay this is how i'm doing stuff this is how i'm doing stuff mm -hmm. and he he did it for you and then, yeah. then you guys did it for the world and it's um yeah it's even made, at it's like his impact. funeral like yeah. everyone that like gave a testimony was like i learned so much from jason i learned so much um they were old they were young like all ages they learned from him yeah um because he's a very relatable person yeah. i think that's why we ended up doing the workshops because i feel like he was one of them people where you can talk to everybody and yeah. everyone can resonate i feel like he knows how to work a room and just be relatable and um, give his information in like understanding chunks yeah. there were some people you can talk to and it sounds like absolute Japanese but you're like <laughs> what on earth are you talking about yeah yeah no shout out to him uh, may he rest in peace mm. um, and definitely he's left a legacy behind and hopefully we'll mm -hmm. you know with everything that we're doing we we'll hopefully we'll, we'll try and take take that mantle on um so you you've got how many properties have you got right now you do me personally yeah. like i've bought is one okay bought, so one. bought one and you, you're rent is that f you finished renovating it now yeah so okay. i because i was teaching at the time mm. i literally gave myself the summer holidays to mm. renovate so i know it's quite tight but i gave myself like two months a month and a half to renovate wow. the whole house i was in there every day all day I was not outside. I said, no one is seeing. If you want to see me, come and help me with the house. Yeah. Literally. Really? So the that, only that time actually... my friends saw me was when they helped me with the house. I said, I'm not outside at all. That's why this year I was outside. Man. I was outside differently this year. But um, last year, yeah. Um, But to be fair, when I first bought the house, I didn't think it needed that work, much work doing to it. Okay. And I was very taken back. <laughs> wow. I was taken back by the amount of what they actually needed doing to it. So, okay. Let's, let's go through the deal. So how much, how much, if you're if you're able to how much mm -hmm. did you pay for it how did you say the deposit like was it through like um your um, nine to five or something else um and um yeah how much did how much did you have to renovate like what was you renovating so the property price was 125,000 okay and that was for a two-bed house yeah. um in the Staffordshire area okay um which is quite good for that area but you can definitely not get that right not now that expensive no <laughs> there's no way we're getting that now mad 125k i know Ooh. and it's a very good sized house it's got a front and back garden it has a drive like a double driveway like it's a lovely i can't like i got that for a bargain yeah <laughs> i got that for an absolute bargain um i put down 15 percent, so it okay. ended up being eighteen thousand two fifty deposit and then um, I have my legal fees to pay for on top of that. I think that came to just under 3,000 with like all the additional costs and things like that. Um, initially, I only, sorry, my phone That's is ringing. Right. Initially, I only anticipated to do the bathroom and then paint the whole house and then do the carpets, blah, blah, blah. And then I looked at the kitchen and I said, hell no, <laughs> this needs doing. And then the garden, when I first bought the garden, honestly, I promise you it wasn't bad. 
then when I bought it, the guy, he just had not maintained the garden, like not one bit. And then, um, so it was overgrown and then the shed was rotting. So the shed had to come out when, where the shed came out, there was like a massive dip in the garden. So anyone could just fall in the ditch. And I was like, fall in a ditch. That's it. Wow. This, this needs, this needs doing. I can't leave this. And then I never really knew how much gardens cost. I don't think landscaping was that much. Like I was getting quotes for 6,000, 9,000, 11,000. And I said, right, <laughs> where's this coming from? Where's this coming from? Cause it's not coming from my bank account. Like, I don't know where this meant to come from. Um, so the f- I'm, I kind of just focus on inside the house first. So the, the inside okay. is the most important thing yeah. for me. So I did the bathroom. The bathroom was about 4,000 pound renovation. What, the, like the renovation knowledge, where did that come from? Was that from like family, friends? That was just, that was just me. you. That what was just what me. do you do? Just jump on Google and just like um, watching YouTube videos of like how to renovate and yeah, really? like okay. when when I when the whole process of the house is going through. So for those that don't know, it takes about like three months to like purchase a property, go for the solicitor cost and not solicitor cost. Sorry, the solicitor process. Um, so whilst I was doing that, three months is quite a long time. So I thought in that time, let me keep going back to the house, look at what needs doing. Um, the house was empty, so it made it a lot easier. However, m- the, the estate agents that I have, I don't know it's the same for everybody, but they'd only allow me to go in with a builder. They wouldn't allow me to go in by myself and just have a look around. So I did have to kind of like work around people's timing. But I'd go in with like a plumber and I'd be like, okay, what needs doing to the bathroom? I got like quite a few quotes and I was like, okay, can you start? I knew the kind of time the solicitor gave me for the completion date. So I was like, can you start around this time? If you can, cool, I'll book it in. So as soon as I got the key, people are inside. And that's what helped it make it a lot easier for me to get the whole renovation done um, in that short space of time that I gave myself. Same with like the painting, decorating. I got quite a few quotes, got people to come in, give me a quote. Can you start completion date? Cool. And then things like that happened. Um, I use Instagram really for inspiration. I feel like there's lots of inf- inspiration on Instagram. I like how new build houses look, okay. but I don't want to buy one. So yeah. I kind of looked at a lot of new builds. I went to show homes as well. okay. And I looked at like how they were designed and I thought, okay, let me just see what I could do to my house on a budget. Okay. Cause again, um, I know one of your questions were like, how did you save for like the renovation? But I didn't have any additional income other than my nine to five. And at the time I was teaching and I was like an unqualified teacher. So I was still getting paid quite low. So I th- at the time, I think I was on like 25K. Wow. So I really wasn't earning a lot. Yeah. Um. So everything is just coming from my wages. And I think um, discipline is a big thing as well. So it's like, I'm young, I want to go out, but... I can, I've got set certain goals for myself and I know that certain things cost X amount of money. So I was saving quite a lot and I didn't purchase a house until I was ready to renovate as well. Yeah. So it wasn't just, okay, I've got the deposit money. Let me just run with it. I need the renovation funds as well. Okay. So, um, the help to buy ISA, um, savings accounts, all of that really helps. Yeah. And lockdown, lockdown helped as well. I'm not yeah. even going to, wow. I'm not going to lie. Lockdown yeah. Not having to go out in that I wasn't, right spend, I was, yeah. I was, I was. I looked at my wages and probably like 80% of it was going back into my savings. So okay. for that duration of time, I definitely saved a lot more money. I think that sped me up maybe like a year. Okay. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's, that's dope though, because I mean, at least you had the discipline because a lot of people defo didn't, even though we were during lockdown, they're still buying stuff, takeaways, clothes shopping, all of that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. Now I don't think a lot of people took advantage of not having to go out to, yeah. to save more money. Um, so how much is a property worth now? But at one, two, five, in what year was that? 2021. Okay. Oh, about a year ago. Okay. And yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. It's been a year. Yeah, I'm acting yeah, like it's been five years yeah, ago now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it must feel like that for, for, for everything you're doing. <laughs> it was literally a year ago in September. Yeah. 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 And the value yeah, valuation probably, since then? So I haven't got it revalued, but I did try and take out additional money to fix the garden. And they were like, just with the the house index price rise, it went up to, I think, 140,000. Oh, wow. Um, so, yeah, and that's without them even knowing about any renovation or anything wow. like that. So I definitely feel like minimum 150, yeah. like as an absolute minimum, I think the wow. house is going for 150 now. Wow. That's, and that's like in that's a crazy. year, that's like 25K. Yeah. So I I, I want to get it valued, but um, I kind of want to sort out a couple more things and then I'll get it valued after. Okay, man. Yeah. And is the plan to to live there, rent it out? 
No, the the plan is always to use it for investment. Okay. Um. So at the moment, it's kind of like a half and half for me yeah. right now. Like half there to live, half to invest. Okay. So I do the rent a room scheme at the moment. Okay. Um. But I do that through like Airbnb, and I only I only attract contractors. I don't do any leisure because I don't want no parties in my house. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mad. Yeah. So I work with um companies even such as like amazon things like that and i get their workers like into the house and they will stay there for like um it depends sometimes i stay there for a week up to like three to six months and i have like contracts with them so that i just know that it's just one set person coming in or or like two set people coming in and that's it and then they're giving me a guaranteed income that way I'm not actually paying for the house. So I've never paid for that mortgage myself. Like that's other crazy. people pay for that mortgage. Wow. So that's kind of like how I use the property. I would like to turn it into a consent to let. Um, well, not turn it. I would, I'd like to apply for consent to let so that um, when my term finishes, I want to change it into a buy to let mortgage. Okay. And then um, probably take some equity out and then purchase another property again. Mad. Um, but at the moment with the profit that I get from the house, I'm looking to expand my portfolio through rent to rents. So that's more like what I'm looking at right now. Um, I do really like service accommodation. I think it's an amazing source of income. Yeah. All the all the properties in the family portfolio, apart from one, is a service accommodation. Okay. So we've got one in Wolverhampton. What's service accommodation for those guys? Um it's like your Airbnb. Okay. Um, so you rent out a property um by the night. And again, there's two kind of avenues you can go down. You can go down the leisure route or you can go down the contractor route. So leisure is more like if I was to come to London tonight and just stay and I'm just going out for drinks, whatever, blah, 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 going out for a purpose. Well, contractors, um, companies are putting their workers in your property and it's solely for them just to stay there so they can commute to work a lot easier. Um, so where my property is, it's close to a lot of motorway links and... Um, a lot of construction work. The HS2 um, is being built kind of like along the route of like where my house is. So I think there's a lot of construction work going on with that. Wow. Um, but there's been a lot of random work as well. Like someone said that they came because they had to search how many eels were in the water. And I'm like, <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what? Like that's what? So like, that's a job. Like what? <laughs> but I'm not complaining. I mean, yeah, I'm not make complaining. Your money how you, like, make you, lot your money. Are, you lot are funding me, so yeah. that's fine. But what? <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. Wow. I wanted to ask you. So you said that you got your you you, you get like companies like their contractors will mm -hmm. pay like to to live in your in your place. Yeah. Is that how did you get that agreement with with these um, companies? So to be fair, it's not. It's not hard. You literally, I literally just advertise on Airbnb, booking dot com, and they come to me. Really? Um, okay. So a lot of them, I find what they do is they book for like mm, maybe about two, three nights, or a little bit longer, probably like three nights to a to like five days, and then um, they don't book anything longer than that. But if you ask them how long are you going to be in the area for, a lot of them will tell you that they've been there for a couple of months, but they're only booked for like a week just to see if they like the property and if they're not, they'll just go somewhere else. Right. So from that, I kind of like convert them into direct bookings. So um, it's no longer through AirbnbBooking.com. They just come directly to me. They pay me directly and I, right. I have like a contract with them. So right. I'm like, okay, if you pay me X amount, it kind of works out like 10% discount, but it's not really 10% discount. It's just... I'm not paying the commission to Airbnb. Yeah. So for them, it's cheaper. But for me, I'm kind of getting more right. benefit the same. That's smart. Yeah. And then you're building up like, uh, basically like a network. As yeah, well, like literally as well. Because ah. these people have money. Yeah. <laughs> these people have money. The people in my house right now, they're building like some million pound golf course. And wow. um, because we've got quite a few properties, we've got a few of their workers like in different properties as well. Um, so that's also handy as well. So if you know that they've got a lot of workers in that area, just because one of them's in yours doesn't mean that there's only got one person working on that project. That's yeah. the most likely have quite a lot of people. Wow. So when you have a lot of people or a lot of properties in one area, it's quite good to put them all in different houses. Wow. That's such an epic way. And I, I don't think I've actually heard many people speaking about that way. And I think as well, you, you mentioned rent to rent. Um, mm -hmm. as well which we'll, we'll get onto in a second I just wanted to ask you because you're you're very transparent which I love that's mm -hmm. what I love about your page that you're transparent about what's gone well for you 
what hasn't gone well for you. Yeah. And um, there was a situation I, I remember, um, you were talking about your garden earlier, <laughs> how you tried to, you wanted to do some renovation. What what oh, happened Lord there Lord with it? Um, what, what happened there? So as I said, my garden needed a lot of work doing to it. Um, there was a guy that my mom works with. He had just had his garden done and he was recommended from his next door neighbor because she got her drive done um, by a guy. I'll even mention his name, Tom Crump. <laughs> 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 yeah, by him. Out in it, mad too. Yeah. Um, and he did her driveway, then he did his garden. So I've seen pictures, it looked really nice. And he was like, yeah, I recommend him, he's good. He came and gave me a quote. He gave me all these ideas for the garden. So then he came, um, he asked for, I think it was, was it a third? I think he asked for a third of the price up front. And that was still like a good grand and a bit. Um, and that was kind of like just to start paying the workers and buy some of the materials. And for me, that wasn't abnormal because I've at that point, the whole of the inside of the house was done. And pretty much every single contractor that I used used that method as well. They wanted some upfront payment first, then the rest after. It's very rare that anyone was solely just pay after. So for me, it wasn't like, oh, he's taking the mic, like, do you know what I mean? So I was quite comfortable with giving him the money. Um, then he started doing the work. He had like a digger and he just dug up the whole garden. Like he just dug up everything, like everything possible that he saw, he just dug it up. The grass, he dug it up. For what reason? I don't know. He just dug it up. <laughs> um, and cause he was trying to like dig out some of like the tree stumps, he ripped off some of the next door neighbor's fences. Um, and that caused like the foundation of the, the ground on the next door neighbor's side to be quite shaky. So, um, their like patio area was like all lifting and then I started getting messages like, um, so sorry, but my aunt's died of COVID. And during that time, like COVID is still, you know, it's not, it wasn't as big as like 2020, but it was still big. Um, so I was like, okay, like, I'm really sorry, like take your time. And he was like, I'll be back for, I think it was like a week, like a week and a half later, he was like, he's given me a date. He's like back for this date. This date has now come, he hasn't come back. And I said, I appreciate your grieving, but could you just let me know, like, you know, are you coming back? Are you not coming back? And he was like, oh, I'm so sorry. Like, yeah, I am coming back. I'm coming back. Um, and then again, like he kept giving me dates and these dates, he wasn't showing up. So I'm like, okay, you're taking the mic now. Like my garden looks like a construction site. When are you coming back <laughs> to this house? Mad. And then that's when he started ignoring my messages, wasn't getting anything back. And then he came back to me and then was like, I'm going to take you to court. He's going to take you to court. That doesn't make what? no sense. I said, for what? He goes... I want all the money. And I said, you want money want for what? What? You want money for what? And he goes, I can't complete the job. So just like, give me the remainder of like, what I've like, cause basically he's only paid, for, he's trying to tell me that he's only done materials, but the money that he took from me originally was just for materials, but he wanted the remainder for like the workers and stuff. And I said, I'm not giving you any additional money because you've just gone missing from the job. As you know, some people, I don't think common sense is common. That doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. So I think for me, I was getting so angry and I'm like, my garden looks like this. I'm at a point where my house is basically finished, but you're preventing it from being completely finished. Like nothing is making sense. So we're just going back and forth. I got other people to try and call him. Um, call him unknown number, everything. Even to this day, if I called him, if you called him now, I promise you, he wouldn't answer the phone. Um, so yeah, from that, I've tried going through all the processes. Everything kind of like bounces back. Um, and then I've kind of just left it um, for a bit because winter has now come. I think this happened leading into September. So and obviously after that, it starts being winter. A lot of landscapers are kind of like go off because it's kind of off season. A lot of them don't work. So the garden has got like significantly worse. And then it's come to around a couple of months ago now. I think it was like, May, June, I thought, okay, and now I need to start looking at how to like fix the garden up. Um, found a guy, um, really good reviews on Google, all of this. I could see pictures of his work. Same thing. Same thing happened. In terms of just me not. having to run people down. Really? So um What's with people, man? Yeah, but apparently this happens a lot with landscapers. Really? Apparently, okay. like landscape is probably the the worst, the worst part of a job in terms of trying to get someone like legit so with with these people these were trademark driveways and i'm in the process of taking them to court because okay. they are horrendous a horrendous wow. company and i think 
at the moment, I'm under the impression that they stopped trading under that name. Right, okay. Because all of a sudden, I've seen Google and now they're getting bad reviews on Google. So Okay. And okay. now that I know who's working in the company, I've clocked that. I think some of the reviews were just themselves. Yeah. Giving them yeah, themselves reviews, the reviews. Yeah. Wow. Um, so they have done the garden. Like, Don't get me wrong, they've done the garden. So the garden is significantly better than how it used to look. But it's like everything is botched. Everything is just like just not to a good standard. And when I'm telling them, like, you're not getting any payment until things are rectified. It's like, what well, I think it looks fine. Yeah. Well, it's not about what you think. It's about what I think I'm the customer. So, and in your terms and conditions, it says no payment is to be made until customer is satisfied. And okay. As a so customer, that's on them. I'm not yeah. satisfied. <laughs> yeah, that's on them. Yeah. yeah. And you've also mentioned like five-year guarantee, all of these things. And I'm asking you to come back and fix things and you're not coming back. Um, and they threatened to like rip up the whole garden. Really? Um, because, but that was when I asked them to fix the stuff and they said it was fine. And I said, well, I'm not paying you. So I said, they'll rip it up. And I said, well, you can rip it up because it would just be back to how it used to be. And you still haven't got one penny from me. So if you want to rip it up, that's absolutely fine with me. Cause I'll just go to somebody else. And then I think when they saw that I was so calm with them ripping it up, then they, they came back and tried to fix certain things. But again, it just wasn't to a good quality. Wow. Um, so Right now, yeah, I'm in that that court process with them. Um, so it is it is draining and it is really frustrating because the inside of my house, like not even to brag, but the inside of my house is beautiful. The outside, the garden. Right now, I think from an outsider, you'd be like, "Oh, this garden's nice," but when you start looking deep, you're like, "Oh, fair enough." Yeah, you're like, "Oh, mad." Like even when I've got people to like fix that certain things, um, in the interim. Like certain landscapers are like, what the hell? Who did this? Like they're literally like, who did this? Even like the fencing, they were like, no, like who did this garden? Cause they're just uh, like, it's as if they've gone in and just tried to rush everything. Like, um, do you know when you have like wooden sleepers to like hold yeah. up stuff? Like I've got like wooden sleepers like surrounding the garden. So to make it look really pretty and some of the sleepers are even trying to fall forward now. Um, and there's like gaps in the garden. They put like garden turfing down and it looks like carpet. Um, the garden turf is like really poor quality. Um, the only thing that I did, um, when I wasn't happy with the garden is I got quotes from different people, um, about the things that I wasn't satisfied with. And then I calculated them quotes and then I deducted it from the final bill. Um, but as the garden has, um, aged, I'm starting to see more things. So it's the things that I haven't saw from before that I'm trying to get money for now. So I've already calculated certain things that they haven't got money from me for, but there's now other things that I need to rectify. Wow. So I can't lie to you, like buying a house is great, but there's things that there's quite a lot of downsides to yeah. buying a house. Cause when something goes wrong, it's actually on you. Yeah. And with me just buying the house by myself, like it's not like, oh mom, fix the house or dad fix the house. It's me. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So it can get quite draining, but touch every type of wood the inside is perfect yeah <laughs> yeah the inside is no mad problems. mad yeah and that's and i and i'm glad that you told that story because i think you know the reality of it is is that sometimes on social media you know people make getting into property seem like it's easy which is why i said i, I love your page because you're like you're real with it yeah you said okay look this is the problem that i've yeah. had with it and i think when you give that realism to it it's not to shy people away from it it's just that people need to get ready to work yeah it's a grind as well do you yeah. know what i mean it's not like, oh, you're just going to get into property and you're lying on a beach. No. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? And I Somewhere think a lot of people world. think that. Yeah. I think even like um, things like different property investment strategies, like if you think that you can just purchase a house, let's say you get a buy to let and you just put a regular family in there. Um, some people don't even calculate what profit they're going to get. Yeah. Some people are literally just meeting the end, like making ends meet in terms of, let's say that all their bills, like the mortgage and any additional bills that they need to pay come to like 700 pound and they're renting the property for 700 pound. You're not making any money. And I think some people think that they would have been like buying like Lamborghinis by now because they've invested in property and they've got an investment property. But if you don't work out um, like your return of interest and all that kind of things, like you're not gonna make money. Yeah. Like you need to think about these things and calculate them before you even make these moves. Um, like I think that service accommodation and HMO are the best strategies in terms of cash flow. Um, flips are good, but obviously that takes a lot longer to see the money, a lot more time. And you may go through the things that I went through in terms of the, uh, all the renovation stuff as well. Cause I know, sorry, people that have been through the renovation process with flips and it's taken them longer than they think. And they're running out of money and 
all the workers are messing them about. And if they have people like how I have, it sets you back so much. Yeah, yeah. And that's the thing. You have to find people that are trustworthy, but I feel like it's really tough to find people that are trustworthy. Yeah. And I mean, you got told, you saw somebody online, great reviews, but they were faking, yeah. faking the reviews. You got word of mouth and it's like, sometimes you may just get burnt with something I know. that's not and great. I don't take it personal. Yeah, yeah. Like there's people that are out here that, have probably like done million pound renovations and they've got burnt. Like, I know this is not just me. And I feel like that's why I'm so transparent with it because I'm like, I understand that it's very easy to get burnt out there. And as I said before, I had around like eight different contractors working in the house and not one of them gave me one problem. Um, They were all great. Some of them, I had never seen their work before. Okay. Like oh, never seen their work. Yeah. <laughs> Mad. Um, and some of them like, um, I think the bathroom was the only person that I probably like did my proper like research into. Um, the guy who helped with my kitchen in terms of just little fittings and stuff. Um, my cousin just said, oh yeah, he did a couple of things in the house for me, but it wasn't to the extent of like what I was asking him to do. So to be fair, I didn't even know what he was capable yeah. of. I just said, please just come and help me. <laughs> and in terms of, um... I think, yeah, I just had other just other little things doing in the house, like the carpet. Um, they were from Birmingham when they came all the way to Stafford to help me with the house, with the carpet. They were great. Again, I don't know them personally, but yeah. Wow, wow. So That's again, epic. it's it's hard to be like, always go for reviews, always go for Insta, always yeah. do this, because I feel like regardless, sometimes you just get unlucky. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And for a beginner, where like, I know you started your journey by going to 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 a workshop and, mm -hmm. and you've met somebody that was like of a similar age mm -hmm. uh, as you doing that. What would be like your recommendation in terms of like a complete beginner wanting to get into property? Where's like the starting point for them? Um, I'd say message people and talk to people. I feel like I learned the most by talking to people that again are transparent like some people actually don't like to give information away and that's fine for them but some people like genuinely like giving information yeah. away and even if you need to shadow someone ask for like mentorship I know that time is precious as well but some people have time to give I mean like if anyone messages me anyone can vouch for me like I will sit on the phone with them for hours I can chat <laughs> I can <laughs> chat so I was on the phone for hours and I'll just be like hey I did this I did this or maybe don't do this or maybe do this. Um, so I definitely think that. And again, like look through like these Insta pages, like even though I've got mine, there's plenty of property pages out there yeah. that give so much good advice. Um, and I feel like going through that, going on YouTube, um, I really like going to the workshops because I like to network. Cause I, I feel like with best, networking, yeah. you can meet so many people. Like even with my podcast, all the people that I've had on my podcast right now is through network. And I didn't know anyone beforehand. Um, even like Clarence, I didn't know Clarence beforehand. I met him through Clubhouse. Um, and then he was giving great information. And then we just talked, he jumped on my podcast. And then we just, I think we really vibed together. And then, yeah, we've got, uh, we do our workshops now. And I, I've learned so much from him in terms of like, mortgages even when i was going through my mortgage process i was calling clients like wait can i do this wait <laughs> should i do this wait should i do this and he was helping me do you know what yeah. i mean and even though my, my mortgage advisor was there i felt like sometimes clients was just a little bit more relatable yeah um in terms of the information that he was giving me and things like that so again networking for me is like the biggest thing especially if you don't come from like a family where purchasing a property is like the norm because I know that a lot of black families, they come from like renting or council houses and exactly. they don't know how to get out of that cycle. Maybe they don't want to, but some of them want to and don't know how to get out of that cycle. So if you haven't come from a family like that and you're trying to understand then definitely reach out, like my page is open. Yeah. My replies yeah, sometimes yeah, yeah. are awful, but. <laughs> <laughs> but you reply, you I reply. reply. Yeah, I come back, I, I come back, you definitely reply. I reply. Yeah. <laughs> my replies can be awful. Just because sometimes I juggle too much and I think I am. Um, I forget that I'm just one person behind everything. Yeah, yeah. it's, yeah, it's, it is, you know, and I completely agree with what you're saying. I think networking is definitely one of the key things that, like you said, I think the closer you get to people and networking, you know, like before I used to scoff at networking, but I realized it's, it doesn't have to be as calculated as 
it's just about just going to an event, yeah. you know. And naturally, people you will see somebody, you be like, oh, I liked your story, and then you just chat to them, and then yeah. you just relate to them. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be like, okay, I I need to, you know, I need to be shy. I need to no, it's not about that. I think yeah. it's just about putting yourself in places like your workshop where maybe there are like-minded people, there are people like you that want to learn. And I think Mm -hmm. if you're in those spaces, you're probably going to be more comfortable. I know there's certain spaces that I probably won't be that comfortable. Even though I I come from the corporate world, I I wouldn't classify myself as a corporate person like that. I don't really like being in really corporate corporate with suits because I I don't really like wearing suits. That's just not me, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, exactly. It just feels so like, I don't know what, what's the word to say. It feels like you're just trying to get something out of, of somebody. Mm-hmm. Whereas I think sometimes if your s- space is where it's a bit more relatable, maybe you're inspired by that person. So you just want to yeah. understand their story a bit more. I think that's why I did like the young black yeah. landlords because I thought it wasn't to segregate anyone because I did get a bit of backlash for that. But yeah. it was mainly just because. Oh, you got backlash that. for that? Yeah, but I don't really care. But nah, man. I don't really care. Backlash but at the end what? of the day, you get <laughs> backlash. backlash for everything that you do. It doesn't matter. I got right? backlash yeah. for the fact that it was five pound and it wasn't free. Like, oh, <laughs> you know is I mean? that what it was? Oh, no, like I got backlash no, for the fact that it was like black people only. Oh, and I got okay. backlash that it was five pounds. I got backlash everything. Like people are always gonna comment, but look, yeah, I don't really care. Well, <laughs> look, black people in the UK, our net worth isn't high. Yeah, yeah and right? I just feel like. You know, There's financial education is lacking, you know. So, yeah, we need yeah. to, we need a space where we can be comfortable and mm-hmm. we can share our experiences. And I think that's fair. Yeah. And like, the, in terms of the workshops that I do now, like, it's open for everybody. Like, it's not segregated in terms of it's only for black people. But when me and Jason first started doing our workshops, I felt like we just felt like, it was just for our community and there were so many people that didn't understand how to get on the property ladder. Yeah. And then home ownership is so low in the black community just in general yeah. because there's such lack of knowledge given in like schools and I think in the homes as well. So um, that's mainly the reason why we did it. And I love the fact that we did that. Yeah. And I feel like there's so many people that I'm still in contact with to this day from those workshops as well. And there's people that I know that I've even bought a property from those workshops. Like Mad. even, That's what even a guy, I know he's even doing better than me now, actually. <laughs> um, he's got like um, a rent to rent in Birmingham. He's doing absolutely amazing me, like absolutely amazing. And I helped him set that one up. Um, and again, like with networking, um, as we were talking about, when it comes to service accommodation, I learned about how to get into it through networking. Yeah. Cause I knew a guy who did it and he was doing it really well. And then he helped us set up the service accommodations as well. So again, networking is key. Yeah, it is definitely, definitely key. Um, what what do you have planned next for yourself? Um, definitely the rent to rents. Like okay. I really just want to build up my um cash flow. Um, I don't just want the I know that I have my um my work wages, like my nine to five wages, and I have the house wages now, but I need I want additional so that I can kind of get rid of work. And that I can just have property as my sole income. Um, I do want to do more um, workshops face to face and online. And I'm kind of looking into doing like more guides and maybe like a ebook as well. Okay. Um, that's kind of like That'll in the good. works at the moment. Yeah. Um, and then probably like in the longer term, definitely investing in Jamaica. Yeah. Like I can't be here any longer. <laughs> <laughs> I can't be here any longer. Yeah, Jamaica's coming. Yeah. Um. When I went out there, I think I definitely had an eye opener of how, um, yeah, that, you know, you have like a calling, like, yeah, yeah I need to do this now. Yeah. 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 Mad. Um, and where, where can people find you? Um, so probably the easiest place is through Instagram. Um, let's talk property underscore. You'll see it. It's like all green or blue type of thing. And um, my podcast will be coming back soon. Um, you can hear me on there. That's available on like Apple Podcasts. Um, and Spotify as well. Um, there's loads of information on there that is still relevant, even though there hasn't been kind of like updated episodes. But again, a lot of the stuff is still so relevant to this day in terms of there's mortgage advisors on there, financial advisors, there's people doing like talking about rent to rent, property sourcing. Um, I think there's service accommodation stuff on there. There's stuff about supported accommodation. So there's lots of information on there already, but there's going to be more. Love that, love that. We'll look out for uh, the latest episodes of the podcast. And yeah, have you got any final words for the listeners? Um, not really, but <laughs> 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 not really. 
You feel like, like, oh yeah, I'm giving myself, it all. I'll, I'll talk all. myself out. Of it. No. <laughs> um, no, but um, yeah, thank you for everyone that's listened to this to this point, and thank you as well for inviting me on because I've no. enjoyed it, and I can hear my voice starting to go again. Is it? Is it mad? <laughs> all that, all that party in, in Jamaica, <laughs> nah, nah. It's been great yeah. um, having you on. I wanted to get you on because, like I said, I think a lot of people will uh, relate to you and mm-hmm. your situation and how you you know, successfully got yourself into property and how you, you know, manage the bad points, but mm. are still going and hopefully going to continue to grow your uh, portfolio. Mm. I think it's always good to just have, have somebody that's closer mm-hmm. to your audience sometimes. Um, yeah. You know, I think I got my first property, like, when I was 30, yeah, yeah, yeah about three years ago. How, how old are you? Um, mm. Do you know what? I'm 26 on Friday. Okay, 26 on Friday. And you got mm. yours 25? Twenty four. Whoa! Did you know what? I get so confused. <laughs> yeah, I was twenty four. Yeah, yeah, I was twenty four. Yeah, exactly. So, so yeah, so you got yours at twenty four. So you got yours six years before me. And this mm-hmm. is what I'm saying. I feel like the people that are getting onto the property ladder are getting younger and younger. And I think that's kind of what mm-hmm. I want for 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 this podcast, just to leave a legacy behind and yeah. pass that information on. So I wanted to get somebody that they can relate to. So yeah, no, thank you so much. I appreciate mm-hmm. you coming all the way down. From Birmingham. She came down from Birmingham, people. So <laughs> you better appreciate this. And fresh this. off the plane as exactly, well. Exactly, exactly. Fresh off that plane. <laughs> so yeah, you better I'm still, appreciate this um, one. I'm still in Jamaica time zone. What time is it there now? I think it's early in the morning. Mad. Yeah. Mad. mad no, I'm waking mad, up mad. in my head. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Um, but yeah, no, thank you so much, Hayley, for for blessing us uh, no this problem. week's episode of the Takeover Experience. I hope listeners and watchers that you've enjoyed this episode. And yeah, we'll, we'll see you next week. <laughs>